Alrighty, so this is your review for the um, practice final exam. Once again, for every point you get correct on the practice final is, is one extra credit point with a possible of 50 extra credit points that can be added to your total points earned. Okay, not to the total points earned for the class, but just to your total points earned. Okay, so now let's look at the first one. And what I'll do is get you started with these problems, not necessarily give you the answers. I may give answers to a few of them, but not to all of them. But just pretty much get them set up for you so you can execute the rest of the um, problem. All right, so for the first one, it says, What is the x coordinate of the point of intersection for the two lines below? In this problem here, um, we're dealing with the linear system. And if you recall, three ways to solve a system is by graphing, elimination, or substitution. Now, it's more than obvious that substitution is the ideal way to solve this problem, since the second equation is already solved for the y variable. In other words, y equals negative 6x plus 40. I am going to substitute in the first equation the, that expression, negative 6x plus 40 in for y. Now what you have here is a linear equation in terms of one variable which you should be able to solve to get your answer. And once again the problem is asking for the x coordinate only. So you don't have to find the y coordinate, just find the x coordinate. And once you solve this equation here, it will give you the x coordinate. Okay? Let's look at question number two. Now two is asking for the y coordinate. What is the y coordinate of the point of intersection for the two lines below? Now this system here is a little different from the first one. Substitution is not the ideal way to solve this linear system. The ideal way to solve this system is to use um, elimination. So like stated before in the class, it doesn't matter what variable you choose to eliminate, just choose a variable. I am going to choose to eliminate the x variables. In order for the x variables to eliminate, all right, so this term here needs to be a positive 6x. So I'm going to multiply the entire second equation by 3. So I didn't do anything to the first equation. So it stays the same. The second equation becomes 6x minus 9y is equal to 12. Now if you recall when you're doing, subs when you're doing elimination you simply add the two equations together and when you add those two equations together you want a variable to eliminate so it's quite obvious that the x variables will, will eliminate when I add straight down so I get negative 2y is equal to 32 and you should be able to finish it from there okay only find the y coordinate question number three so now this one is asking for the number of solutions. How many solutions does the system have? Now I like it. Th I like the way Dr. Berger does it on the videos. He put both equations into slope-intercept form, and when when the equations are written in that form, it's quite obvious to figure out how many solutions you're going to have. So for that first equation. Let's look at um, putting it into slope-intercept form by first subtracting x from both sides of the equation. And I get y is equal to negative x plus 4. And the second equation, let's put it into slope-intercept form. So let's add 4x to both sides of the equation first. I get negative 2y is equal to 4x minus 8. Let's divide every term by negative 2 now to get the to get the um, y variable by itself and you get y is equal to negative 2x plus 4. Alrighty now ref go to page 407 in your ebook and there's a chart on that on that page alright if you if you identify the slope and the y-intercept 
you then should be able to determine how many solutions this this um this system ha have okay so refer to your ebook page 407 and identify the slope in the y intercept for these two equations and you'll find the answer on that page okay question number 4 once again how many solutions does a system um, of linear equations have alright so once again let's put both equations in slope intercept form just like the first one alright and refer to page 407 and if you if you're able to identify the slope and the y-intercept of both equations you will find the answer on page 407 so number three and number four are exactly alike alright number five it says which order pair is the, is in I'm sorry which order pair is in the solution set for the system of, e of inequalities shown below alright so now for this one right here guys simply plug in the points okay simply plug in the points in order for a point to be a solution to the system here it must be true in both equations or both inequalities alright so let's just do the first one okay and so x is equal to negative 2 and y is equal to negative 1 I'm gonna take those values and plug it into the first inequality my first inequality is this so everywhere I see an X I'm going to substitute a negative 2 and everywhere I see Y I'm going to substitute a negative 1 and I get negative 4 plus 1 is less than 3 negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3 it's less than 3 so is this a true or, fa or a false statement okay I think it's true negative 3 is less than 3 now we do the same thing for the second equation everywhere I see X I plug in negative 2 and everywhere I see Y I plug in negative 1 and we want to see if we get a true statement so negative 2 plus negative 2 is greater than negative 1 so negative 2 plus negative 2 gives me negative 4 now this statement is false negative 4 is not greater than negative 1 so therefore A is not a solution so you have to go through and determine which one is a solution so you know it's not A so it's got to be B, C, or D so you do the rest of it and figure it out watch out for your algebra okay number 6 which system of inequalities is shown in the graph below assume the tick marks represents one unit alright use your graphing calculator from um, your ebook go to your ebook pull up your graphing calculator all right, and graph each one of these systems here all right? and it's quite nice because in every single problem each system is written in slope intercept form so you don't have to put it in slope intercept form graph them the one that matches this is going to be your answer okay so use your graphing calculator alright and then just graph it and see which one matches now just be be very careful remember if you have um, less than I'm sorry greater than or equal to or less than or equal to your line is your line will be solid if you have um, greater than or less than you have a dotted line and if you recall from the ebook they don't show dotted lines they make one they make the they make the um, dotted line really thin and make the solid line really thick okay so pay attention to that please pay close attention to it all right number seven okay another system here and as you can tell all these problems are coming from chapter six Yolanda has 30 coins worth two dollars and thirty five cents 
she has only nickels and dimes how many nickels does Yolanda have alright so in this problem right here there's two things we don't know we don't know how many nickels we have so I'm gonna say x equals the number of nickels and we don't know how many dimes we have so y is going to equal the number of dimes now we need to write two equations that involve x and y now just reading the first sentence or part of the first sentence it says Yolanda has 30 coins All right. so I already know that if I add up the total number of nickels I have and with the total number of dimes it's going to give me the, the total number of coins so my first equation is going to be x plus y is equal to 30 now also from the first equation I know that when I add up or I actually count the total amount of money that I have it would be two dollars and thirty five cents so since a nickel is worth five cents I'm gonna take the decimal um, point zero five and times it by the number of nickels I have since a dime is worth tenth, a tenth of a dollar or just ten cents point ten I'm gonna take it and times it by the number of dimes I have now this value right here this dollar amount should give me how much money I have in a problem and here's my system okay now you have options you can use substitution you can use elimination okay I mean you can graph it if you want to alright um, I, I, that's up to you alright but algebra is probably the best method to use when I say algebra substitution or elimination so here's your system now you solve it okay look at your notes and you solve it okay question number eight alright Carla is three times as old as Lauren in four years the sum of their ages would be 56 which system of linear which system of equations can be used to find the age of Carla K and law and Lauren L all right all right so once again let's read the problem one more time to make sure you understand it so Carla is three times as old as Lauren you know and like I did in the class I like to define what my uh, variables represent which they done for us in a problem already so K is equal to Karen's age actually Carla's age so just to write it out and L is equal to Lauren's age that first sentence says Carla is three times as old as Lauren so to get Carla's age you would have to multiply Lauren's age by three alright so I know that K Carla's age will equal to three times Lauren's age now in four years the sum of their ages will be 56 so four years from now the sum of their ages will be, uh, will be 56 so I'm gonna go over here and write four years from now okay call is gonna be K plus four years old alright and Lauren is gonna be L plus four years old alright so I'm gonna come here so now we just simply add their two ages together alright so as you can see I, I gave you the answer for this problem right here okay alright so it didn't ask you to solve the system it just asked you which system represents the correct answer now let's look at um, question number nine now for this one right here you need to remember the rule I'm going to just give you the rule for this one if you are raising a base 
that contains an exponent to another exponent. The rule says to the rule says to multiply those exponents. All right. The rule says to multiply those exponents. So they're giving you what x is. All right. So simply plugging what x is, use this rule, and you should find the answer. Now, guys, make sure you don't multiply the exponent by the base. A power says to take that base. The power says. The power says to keep the base. To take the base and times it by itself, the exponent number of times. Okay, so if the exponent is five, you take that base and you times it by itself five times. Okay, so you'll get something like this right here. So three raised to the two times three power. All right, and remember, multiply the exponents, get your new exponent, and then take that base and times it by itself that many number of times. And number 10, rules of exponents again. If you're multiplying with like bases, the rule says keep the base the same and add the exponents. So with that rule right there, you should be able to find out what the answer to number 10 is.